Let's turn to North Korea. You have a senior administration official telling us, CNN, that the Trump administration has decided to be more quiet, to be more discreet, as that official put it, about speaking publicly about U.S. military exercises with South Korea and Japan that are aimed at demonstrating military capability against North Korea. The decision, we're told, is meant to give U.S. diplomats more leeway in ongoing sensitive talks. What do you think about this decision? I think it's a step in the right direction. I have been saying for many months that bilateral negotiation is the only way to solve this crisis. Secretary Mattis has said war would be catastrophic. We have over 200,000 Americans in Korea, South Korea. Uh, there would be about a million people killed if there were a war. And we know that negotiations have worked. President Clinton tried it in the 1990s. And there was an agreement, and North Korea agreed to stop its nuclear production for almost a decade. There should be two goals to the bilateral communication. Uh, first, there should be a clear channel of communication between North Korea and the United States. People would be surprised that right now there is only one way North Korea can communicate to the United States government, and that's through their representative in New York at the U.N., well, that's highly dangerous. We need open lines of communication. And second, there should be a priority on stopping the nuclear production in North Korea. I think we can achieve that through bilateral negotiation. You really think that bilateral negotiations could stop North Korea, which has a considerable interest in developing and miniaturizing a nuclear warhead from doing so? I'm not convinced necessarily that it can stop them, but it's certainly, if we look at the example of the 1990s and the Clinton administration, it can delay the development of the nuclear weapons, and it can deter them from using those weapons against the United States. Look, I represent Silicon Valley, and we face a direct threat. I mean, people in my constituency are concerned. No one wants the horrific scenario of North Korea to launch an intercontinental ballistic missile that hits the United States. But we know that the Kim dynasty wants survival. We know that we should have open lines of communication to prevent a nuclear war. The most likely scenario would be because of a miscalculation. And Bill Perry and the Clinton administration showed us how to get at least some negotiated settlement. So it's not an uh, easy situation, but that is a better situation than the alternative of saber-rattling and having some catastrophic mistake. We're being told uh, that there are very initial indications that North Korea is moving equipment around. This could be in preparation for another satellite or, or maybe a missile launch. You're a member of the House Armed Services Committee. Have you been briefed on any of these developments? We have. Uh, I'm not the most recent ones, but certainly uh, we have been briefed, and there's been public testimony about uh, North Korea's ambitions to continue to test intercontinental ballistic missiles, missiles that could uh, hit the United States. And that's why uh, this situation is so dangerous. But one thing I would point out is that the people most affected by this, uh, South Korea, the president of South Korea believes we should engage in uh, direct talks, and the representative of Guam, whose uh, people face a direct threat, also believes that we should engage in direct talks as do uh, Secretary Schultz and, and Secretary Perry and Senator Nunn. So I'm heartened that uh, the president's team seems to be listening to the experts who believe that we can at least keep the United States secure by engaging in talks with North Korea. There's a new round of sanctions now out against North Korea We just yesterday. Do you think this round will work after several other rounds that haven't been able to be fully effective? Well, I give the team credit at the U.N. who got those sanctions. I think the sanctions go further when it comes to restricting oil uh, going into North Korea, although the question is how uh, seriously are these sanctions going to be uh, enforced. I read just today that there were some violations by China where they were still supplying oil to North Korea. So, of course, we need to continue to be vigilant to make sure that all those people who voted for the resolution actually enforce the resolution. I also believe, in addition to the sticks, we need to sit down uh, with the North Koreans and discuss and assure them that we don't have any interest in regime change. Uh, they learned the lesson of Gaddafi uh, in Libya, and they looked at Saddam Hussein, and they said, uh, we don't want to be victims to regime change. If they are assured that the United States has no strategic interest in regime change, uh, I think it will go a long way 
to making sure that we are secure and that we don't have a scenario where we are threatened by North Korea. All right, Congressman Rokana, much more ahead with you. One of your Republican colleagues is calling for a purge of the FBI and the DOJ. We're going to get your perspective on that after a quick break.